Are you ready to be taken over by intelligent robots? I think you will agree with me that robots won't be conquering the world anytime soon. Robots are incredible at doing things with very high accuracy over and over the exact same way, but when it comes to making decisions that require some degree of intelligence, like opening a door or drilling a hole in the wall, things become a little more complicated as we just saw. These amazing dancing robots took months to program, but when successfully programmed, they were able to dance to the choreographed steps again and again, almost in an identical way. But no brains involved. Hello, my name is George and I'm an academic researcher with the Hamley Centre at Imperial College London. Today, I will show you how we make surgical robots clever. Minimally invasive surgery, also known as keyhole surgery, is one of the main areas where robots are increasingly playing an important role. Keyhole surgery is performed through small cuts in the patient's skin, which allow surgeons to insert a long tube-like camera and slender long instruments like this one inside the patient's body. Using these instruments, surgeons can see, grasp, cut and stitch the internal organs as required. This is not something that's easy to do and takes years of practice to master. Can you see, for example, how my hand movements are inverted at the operating end of the instrument? You can try something similar at home, in fact. Hold a pair of chopsticks in both hands and try to tie your shoelaces while looking at yourself in a mirror. Now, imagine that this is not about your shoes, but about the life of a human. One of the main purposes of surgical robots is to reduce the complexity of surgical instrument control during keyhole surgery. This is achieved by a console that shows a magnified 3D view of the patient and master controls that translate the surgeon's hand movements into highly articulated movements of surgical instruments inside the patient. This control by wire operation eliminates hand tremor and enables the execution of very detailed tasks. Now, let me share a secret with you. Surgical robots are not really robots, as they cannot and are not allowed to do anything by themselves, neither pre-programmed nor autonomously. In reality, they are very expensive telemanipulators, which means that they always require a human surgeon to be in control of the telemanipulated surgical instruments. As it is human nature to push the boundaries of whatever we do, engineers and surgeons are dreaming of intelligent and autonomous robot surgeons able to further improve surgery for the benefit of the patient by augmenting or even surpassing the capabilities of the human surgeon. This, however, raises a big question. Can we trust a robot surgeon? Remember, it is not about opening a door, drilling a hole in the wall or tying shoelaces, it is about a human life. Even if advances in artificial intelligence make autonomous robotic surgeons a reality in the future, there will still be significant safety, legal and ethical issues to overcome. Our strong belief is that human operators need to always be present and responsible for all important decisions while keeping the robot under their firm control. Towards this goal, our research focuses on making the relationship between robots and surgeons more effective and safer. We call this human in the loop, robot assisted surgery. One way we propose to achieve this is by using approaches called perceptual human robot interfaces. A perceptual interface 
is one that allows a human to interact with a computer or a robot without having to use a physical device, such as keyboard, gamepad, or master robot manipulator. Can you think of any examples of perceptual interfaces that we use every day? Correct. A voice control assistant is an example of perceptual interface. One type of perceptual interface we have been using extensively in our research is eye tracking. Eye tracking is the process of measuring the point of gaze where you are looking or the motion of the eyes relative to the head. An eye tracker is the device we use for measuring eye positions and eye movements commonly by tracking the position of the pupil with a video camera. Eye trackers can be positioned under or inside the screen, worn like glasses or even embedded in the viewer of a surgical robot. By using eye tracking as a perceptual interface, we can interact with the surgical robot even in a hands-free fashion. We will see a few examples of this later. The second very important thing we can achieve with eye tracking is the ability to observe the human visual system in action. But why is that so important? Do you know the puzzle? Where's Wally? This is Wally. Now, can you find him hiding somewhere in the crowd? Maybe you don't realize, but what your brain did while you were searching for Wally was to guide your eyes to focus your attention for longer periods at some points on the image. This longer duration gazing is called a fixation. Fixations are the moments when visual information is transferred to the brain, which allow us to build an understanding about the world around us. If we use eye tracking to analyze the visual search that took place, we can see that most fixations have landed on red or red-white striped areas of the image, which is our Wally's colors. From this information, someone who doesn't know what Wally looks like could safely assume that he's dressed in red or red-white stripes. That someone could be in fact a robot, which even without being explicitly told, could initiate a visual search alongside the human looking for red or red-white striped areas. The robot having a camera as its eyes and a computer as its brain, can identify all the red and red-white areas in an instant and more reliably and guide the human to find Wally. I hope you can see how the robot has developed some intelligence over a given task in a seamless way, without the human having to explicitly teach the robot. In another example, back in the 60s, Alfred Jarbus used primitive eye tracking technology to show that visual behavior depends on the task an observer is performing. To show this, he recorded the gaze of people observing the painting and an unexpected visitor, while being given different tasks. This is the gaze trajectory superimposed on the painting of someone asked to remember the clothes worn by the people, which is clearly focusing on people's clothes. This is the resulting gaze when asked to remember the position of people and objects in the room, showing an effort to establish relative positions of people and objects. This is when asked to estimate how long the unexpected visitor has been away from the family, with gaze focusing on faces, arguably trying to gather emotional clues or family relationships between the people. I hope I managed to convince you that visual behavior is heavily influenced by the task at hand, and that by using eye tracking, we can seamlessly capture this visual behavior and endow robots with an invaluable token of human intelligence. There is much more information we can recover from human visual system, including one's level of expertise, alertness, drowsiness, point and level of attention, the degree of understanding of a task or concept, and much, much more. In our research, we have used eye tracking in different ways, and I will share a few examples with you. By integrating a binocular eye tracker in the viewer of the surgical robot, we can use the eyes as a 3D scanner. This way, we can control a surgical instrument or the camera to closely follow the motion of an organ by simply looking at an area on it that we want to virtually stabilize. This organ could be, for instance, the beating heart, allowing us to operate on it by virtually stabilizing it without in reality having to stop it. 
Here, we have shown how we can provide surgeons with Superman's X-ray vision, allowing them to see through the surface of an organ while operating on the robot's 3D console. For example, a tumor they want to remove or a nerve they want to avoid and are not visible on the surface. In this example, we have shown how two eye tract surgeons can more efficiently collaborate on a shared surgical task using two consoles without even talking to each other. In this case, the collaborators can seamlessly share their intention by showing each other the position of their gaze. More recently, we have used wearable eye tracking and advanced computer vision algorithms to control a robotic scrub nurse which understands the intention of the surgeon through their gaze and delivers the desirable surgical instruments safely in their hand. We have also shown how we can simplify complex procedures such as endoscopy of the esophagus and the stomach by using eye and head movements to control an endoscopic camera controlled by a robot. The visual system is only one of the places we are exploring and mining for tokens of human intelligence. Others include brain activity, blinking rate, muscle electrical activity, heart rate, sweating, blood pressure changes, body movement and posture, just to name a few. The signals are reflective of the mental, psychological and physiological state of the surgical team during surgery. By combining this and other sensing technologies with robotics, leveraged by perceptual interfaces and human-driven artificial intelligence, our long-term vision is the creation of the smart operating theater of the future, where the human, physical and digital elements are tightly integrated for the benefit of the patient. I hope I was able to show you something new today and many thanks for your attention.